Today on Wrench Benders, we are going to use a 1950s forklift that we call Tweety Bird to pull the grain bed off of a 1968 International Lodestar for another project that's going to be coming. So this right here is Tweety Bird. It's our little yellow forklift. And this right here is the man that owns it. <laughs> it's dad. When did you get this thing? I uh, got it back in uh, about 1992. Any idea how old it is? Have no idea. She leaks a little hydraulic fluid. Has a V4 Wisconsin in it. Um, it was blown up when I got it and I had it rebuilt. Uh, had Columbus Colwell to build up the crank, turn it back down, and to uh, bore the jugs out and sleeve them back to standard, and then I put the engine together and uh, rebuilt all of it, uh, put new rings and stuff in it and bearings, and rebuild it and put it back together. And then I painted the little thing, and I made a cover for the engine. And I it's like running boards off a van or something, like that. running boards off of a van and cut yeah. them and made uh, a little side uh, right covers for the thing because it was all open underneath there. and So I made it look like a little compact unit. Uh, Got to run lead additive in the, in the fuel. Have to run lead additive because uh, the fuel has doesn't have lead in it anymore. And uh, so you have to run lead additive for the valves because the valves will uh, seize up if they have no lubrication on them. Well, go ahead and fire now this thing up. Let's see it run. Yeah, this thing ain't, he probably had it running yesterday. Uh, yeah. So, it is running yesterday. May or may not start. <laughs> it wants to. Good couple weeks since I've had this thing running. Oh, here we go. So, She's gonna be cold natured. Oh, we're, we're doing gonna fire this up. I gotta move it over here because we're gonna lift the grain bed off of it today. Oh, we have grain bed. We need to shut the grain bed. Yeah, here you go. Grain bed. Is that a 16 foot grain bed? And if you look here, I've already prepped it the other day. I've taken the bolts out, cut the welds on this bracket. This is for your cylinder bracket. Let me get up in here where you can see what's going on here. We've got we've got the uh, the hinge part of the cylinder, the scissor part. We've got it chained up so it can't fall down when we lift everything. The hydraulic unit was bolted here. It's in the garage removed. And then back here on the frame, you see right back here, I took a sawzall and I cut the frame right in front of the hinge pin so he'll be able to weld that back onto his frame there you go, cut and continue right to use that hinge pin. So we're gonna lift this bed off this truck and set it down the road today. Yep, we got another truck coming. Guys coming to buy this green bed. We're gonna pick it up off this truck and we're gonna drop it down onto another truck. I think we're he's got a- this cab because it's gonna have something to do with this frame here. Oh yeah. And that's, yeah. that's a whole other project coming. Yeah, I think the guy's bringing a 1984 GMC flatbed. I don't know. We'll see when he gets here. All right, let's see this cold start. Dumbass. <laughs> no keys? keys? Yeah. We'll call this the walk of shame. what you get when you forget the keys you get the walk of shame all right we're gonna see this thing cold start like I said 24 degrees outside today you can see the frost on the windshield if I get up here close enough Chile Chile here in southern Ohio
Is it gonna run? Come on, baby. Run. Yeah. <laughs> See, we haven't done any work to this yet. Just uh, done a carb build, and a carb rebuild, and fixed the brakes on it. And that's it. I bought it up in uh, Blissfield, Michigan, and I paid a uh, thousand bucks for it. And we'll hold it home on the trailer behind my truck. This is what she is. I haven't changed nothing else about it. Not yet, anyways. Not yet. Hey, the brakes are working. That's always a plus, right? Oh yeah, you see how he's turning real hard? There's no power steering. Yeah, no on power this steering. Thing. That needs to be fixed because I'm a sissy. Well, keep it running, keep it running. Mm. <laughs> Try again. There we go. Okay. I'm going to leave it run for a second. Let's uh, put the brake on. Put the brake on here. We'll go see if this is where Dad wants it or if we want to change that. Okay. Trying to get some air in the tire here on Tweety Bird. A little low before we get started. Here we go, it's showtime.
Said the scissors falling down? Yeah. Well, uh, we're working on it. We got it up off the bed. Let's see if I can get up under here without a problem. I see it's up off the bed, but the scissors falling down. We're going to have to get that scissor figured out. Problem. The tractor here wasn't able to pick it, so we've had to uh, improvise and use another tractor to help the first tractor pick up the grain bed. Colt's terrible on batteries. Got uh, the bed sold and sent down the road and went down and put some fuel in. It only took about five gallons. And uh, be a uh, little time now. We'll start working on the other motor that I've got picked for this truck. And obviously, we've got some work to do with this frame here. This is off 2000 Freightliner. And uh, as you can see, it's got a Mercedes motor in it. It has seen better days. When I bought it, I didn't even get the head with it. The pistons were laying on the floorboard, so we're going to scrap that motor. But, uh, new drivetrain will live inside this thing. Scoot the axle forward a little bit and, uh, set a Lodestar cab on it. So, give you a little taste of what kind of shape the old truck's in. That is the original mileage right there. Kind of like the little 345 that's in it. It could run a little motor, but I don't think it's going to do what I want it to. So when I get all this put together, hold on a second here, I'll send that down the road just like I did the green bit. All right. Well, thanks for watching, guys.